Amici ben trovati, buon venerdì, buon inizio di weekend lungo in eh, questo che sarà appunto un weekend pasquale sicuramente anomalo rispetto a eh, quello a cui eravamo abituati, non troppo diverso da quello dell'anno scorso, quindi in realtà siamo comunque già abbastanza pronti. L'unica grossa differenza rispetto all'anno precedente è che io ad esempio ho aperto questo canale Twitch, voi direte ce ne facciamo poco, vorremmo uscire, vorremmo fare le grigliate eccetera, ci sarà tempo anche per quello nel frattempo però io cerco di portarvi un po' di contenuti cerco di raccontarvi storie quindi anche questa sera sono live lo spazio è quello dedicato agli amici del rock and roll quindi uno spazio all'interno del quale si parla di progetti idee musicali grazie a quelle che sono state le conoscenze che io eh, sono riuscito così a collezionare negli anni eh, di tantissima musica Oggi ce ne andiamo completamente dall'altra parte dell'oceano per andare a ritrovare un amico, eh, un fratello con il quale eh, ho realizzato un disco, ho realizzato dei singoli e fra poco ve li faremo vedere. Please welcome my friend, my buddy, Mr. Nicholas Johnson. Hey Nick! Hey, buddy, hey Nick, can you... Doing? Hello, you hear me? Yeah, I'm doing great. How's it going? Good, man. Good. Hey, busy but good. Things are starting to look Where are you a now? bit more normal here. I'm in Cincy. I'm right outside in the park. We've got some peace and quiet. Hopefully, uh, hopefully you guys can hear me and see me okay. Yes, we, 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 we can, we can. I know you just got the vaccine, so you're, you're, you're totally out of this shit. <laughs> One more time, there's an ambulance coming by, I'm sorry. Now, I was just checking your Instagram profile and I know that you got vaccine. You got the vaccine. Yes, I got the first shot yesterday, man. Uh, it, it felt like freedom, almost in a way we're halfway home dude I, i go for my second one april 29th so man yeah it felt good my arm is a little bit sore but other than that man, i feel fantastic that's great that's good to hear because here the situation is pretty messed up so you don't want to come back to italy for now but you probably have to maybe later on as soon as i get that second one man i'm, I'm on a plane that's that's what i'm uh. doing Okay, I got you, buddy. So first of all, I'd like to show our, our viewers uh, the very first video we shot together. That was the video for the 90s hours. We got very good memories about, about that moment. It, it's okay for you if we, if we broadcast that video? Okay, abbiamo un attimo perso Nick che deve avere qualche problema di connessione, gli stavo giusto dicendo che avremmo visto il video di The Night is Hours, quindi capita a fagiolo, casca a fagiolo, ce lo ascoltiamo adesso. Oh, 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 oh,
Pictures and frames of the days that are gone Scared and bruised After a while Raise up the spirits for God by the past Oh, the night is ours It's not time for party This fate and regrets This ride of Jameson is for all my friends Songwriters, punks, let's get to the bar Oh, the night is ours Oh, no talk Oh, it's clear Oh, the night is ours Shut down the bars. Oh, when the night is out. The Night is Hours con Nicholas Johnson è il primo singolo di quello che è stato un lavoro che vedete in realtà qui This is Home pubblicato, scusate qui è partito un altro video pezzi a meteri eh, dicevo eh, il primo singolo estratto da questo lavoro pubblicato da Ammonia Records This is Home, uno split album registrato qui in Attitude Studio e che vede appunto la collaborazione di questi due personaggi, io e Nick, che ci siamo incontrati in una maniera abbastanza casuale a Milano. Mi spiace, Nick deve avere qualche problema di connessione al momento, quindi eh, mentre aspettiamo che si riconnetta provo a raccontarvi io la storia, no? La storia di come ci siamo conosciuti io e Nick è una delle più classiche, no? A parte il fatto che lui è americano, in questo momento vive a Cincinnati, l'Ohio è la terra eh, che gli ha dato le origini e a un certo punto però si è trovato di colpo in Italia per seguire un po' quelli che erano sì gli impegni eh, della, della moglie che saluto, saluto Megan, e un po' per eh, vivere un'esperienza di vita diversa, differente. Lui già scriveva canzoni, già era un songwriter eh, negli Stati Uniti d'America, girando tra un locale e l'altro nella città di Milano, una sera si palesa all'ostello Bello Grande, un, un ostello bellissimo all'interno del quale tante volte ci siamo trovati a suonare eh, con eh, i diversi progetti, soprattutto con il, con il punk goes acoustic, e all'interno di quella serata conosco il buon Nick. A presentarmelo è il buon Nicola Specchio, che è, oltre a essere uno dei soci dell'ostello bello, dello stello bello, non soltanto dell'ostello bello grande, mi ha detto, guarda, eh, c'è questo ragazzo, è un songwriter, viene, viene dagli Stati Uniti, è qui per un eh, periodo, non sapevamo ancora realmente quanto tempo si sarebbe fermato in, eh, in Milano, e sta cercando di fare amicizia, sta cercando anche qualche posto in più per suonare, magari puoi dargli una mano. Ci siamo seduti, lui mi ha detto che proveniva dall'Ohio e gli ho detto attenzione, 
sei un tifoso dei Cleveland Cavaliers e lui mi ha detto no, sono un tifoso eventualmente dei Boston Celtics e allora a quel punto c'erano le condizioni di base per poter far nascere un'amicizia ovviamente sto scherzando però abbiamo cominciato quella sera a chiacchierare un po' in merito a quella che era la sua esperienza a quello che era il suo mondo quanto era stato difficile per, per lui trovare una nuova quotidianità proprio dalle nostre parti anche perché ancora oggi ha qualche problema con l'italiano e quindi eh, ci siamo trovati in questo contesto bellissimo super rilassato come quello dell'ostello bello una lunga serata di, di, di birre e shots che ovviamente poi è terminata con chiacchiere sportive chiacchiere musicali quali sono i tuoi interessi quali sono le tue le tue influenze lui mi ha parlato di Tom Perry io gli parlavo di Tom Waits quindi avevamo un sacco di cose comunque in comune no? e da lì ho cominciato appunto a muovermi un pochino per dargli la possibilità di, di suonare lui all'epoca si esibiva solo e esclusivamente chitarra e voce in un eh, locale di eh, Porta Romana perché lui eh, viveva proprio da quelle parti e casualmente viveva nella stessa casa del mio amico Roberto che è uno dei miei più grandi amici eh, che conosco da quando avevo 14 anni tra l'altro anche lui musicista Roby, negli Undead, nei Ball and Chain probabilmente se, se conoscete quello che è stato il nostro percorso avete presente eh, il buon Desert Burst Bob se volete cercarlo sui social e ehm, quindi si, si crearono subito in un attimo una serie di condizioni ideali per poter fare musica insieme, no? Mica aveva appunto bisogno di, 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 di scaldarsi un po' di più, di non suonare esclusivamente in quest'unico locale dove era riuscito in qualche modo ad avere eh, delle, delle serate ogni tanto, doveva cominciare a muovere qualche passo in più. E quindi la mia, la mia esperienza, che all'epoca non era lunghissima nel senso era il 2017 credo se non erro eh, o fine 2016 quando ci siamo conosciuti io come carriera solista ero attivo più o meno da un paio d'anni non di più quindi eh, le situazioni da folk songwriter non erano quelle solite ok per, per me avesse avuto una band punk rock per me sarebbe stato molto più semplice proporgli una serie di, di, di location di serate e cose di questo tipo perché stavo anch'io muovendo un po' i se non i primi i secondi passi passatemi questo termine all'interno di quel di quel contesto e di quella scena riusciamo in qualche modo a creare una bella vibrazione e ad andare un, uh, un po' in giro saluto intanto Marco che è arrivato eccolo qui ciao Marco saluto Letti che c'è sempre saluto Warhols che faceva i complimenti per il, per il brano grazie mille e um, quindi cominciamo quella, quella fase che tutte le band tutti gli artisti hanno, hanno vissuto del cosiddetto andare a procacciare una data non è semplice nella città di Milano se non hai uno storico, se non hai conoscenze, quindi eh, ho cercato io proprio di far valere un po' quello che era il mio percorso per garantire per il, per il buon Nick. E così siamo riusciti a costruire un, un solido rapporto. Intanto mi sta scrivendo... Eh, ah, ok, il suo telefono si è rotto per nessuna ragione. Vediamo se... Ok... Eh, I'm live for now. Let me, me know. Ok, vediamo se riesce a trovare una wifi. Così capiamo se riesce a entrare e farci questa chiacchierata. Dicevo, comincio a utilizzare un po' di quelli che sono i miei contatti e le mie esperienze per garantire, eh, per Nick, perché... Certe volte c'è bisogno proprio di qualcuno che, che garantisca per te, in, eh, anche nelle situazioni di, di musica. E quindi, eh, dicevo, tante sono le serate che cominciamo a vivere insieme. Ovviamente, stando lui in Porta Romana, quartiere a me molto caro e molto vicino, perché io 
sto più o meno da queste parti, da quelle parti, e cominciamo a frequentare ovviamente il mio pub preferito che è il Pogmon che lui ovviamente già conosceva perché è un americano che cosa fa nel momento in cui si trasferisce in un quartiere prende possesso di un bar e lo fa diventare il suo punto di ritrovo quindi insomma cominciamo ad avere sempre più ehm, innesti no? nel, nel, nel nostro quotidiano io gli racconto di, di Roby che vive in quella casa e lui l'aveva intravisto qualche volta quindi insomma diventa tutto molto molto semplice queste serate cominciano a moltiplicarsi sia dal punto di vista delle serate al pub sia dal punto di vista delle serate di musica dal vivo presento Nick a tanti amici e, e cominciamo a fare, a fare gruppo a fare gruppo in maniera decisa e forte Nick Comincia a venirci a vedere anche con gli altri progetti, viene a vederci con gli Undead, viene a vederci con eh, i Bock and the Sailors, viene a vedermi quando mi esibisco da solista, ma tante volte trasformiamo le serate in eh, un co-headlining show, quindi lo porto con me. E però gli suggerisco di provare a integrare nel suo spettacolo due musicisti con i quali io già stavo avendo a che fare, ovvero Davide Pascalis al Caon Batteria e Lorena Vezzaro al, al violino. In quel periodo, tra l'altro, entra in formazione di quello che era il mio progetto solista anche Angelo Merico al basso e quindi diciamo che il passo è breve per Nick per cominciare a suonare con la stessa line-up che, che avevo io coadiuvato in più dal, dalla seconda chitarra di Roby e quindi cominciamo a girare con un'unica, chiamiamola in maniera eh, tecnica, backing band, in realtà è il gruppo dei, degli amici, e però con due nomi diversi, ovvero Nicholas Johnson and the same old strangers, Andrea Rock and the Rebel Poets. Ok, questo serviva per, eh, in alcuni locali per far capire che ci saremmo presentati proprio con una band, ovvero che non eravamo completamente da soli. Allora, Nick dovrebbe arrivare, mi ha scritto che, che, che riprova, e quindi così cominciano realmente le serate. Cominciano le join e le gem sul palco, magari per qualche cover o per qualche eh, brano insieme, e da lì viene ovviamente voglia di condividere un disco io non avevo mai realizzato uno split record nella mia vita non avevo mai fatto un EP in split con un altro artista non ci era mai capitato con gli Undead non mi era capitato con eh, le mie band precedenti decido di farlo con, eh, con Nick vogliamo prendere una reference importante Joy Cape eh, e Tony Sly ci proviamo Proviamo a prendere quella come, come reference. Io provo a far entrare Nick. Vediamo. Nick fucking Johnson. <ride> ok, vediamo se riesce a connettersi. Eccolo! There you are. What's up? Hey, hey. Is it working? There, there's a lot of lag. Are, are you connected to a Wi-Fi? Damn, it's, it's really hard like this. There's a yes, huge a delay. I don't know what's going on, buddy. I can't hear you. Ok, ri, ri, riproviamo, riproviamo in un secondo momento. Aspetta che glielo chiedo. Uh, ok. Try again with why. Fai, please. Eccolo. Eccolo, eccolo. There you are. 
Yes. I got you. Can you hear me, man? I'm, I'm on Wi-Fi. Okay. Know, I don't know what's going on. Weird. My bad, dude. It's the most nickname. Okay, you... I, I, I don't know why you're, you're pretty late, but uh, I, I was telling everybody the, the story of uh, how we got to, to, to meet each other. So the Ostello Bello, the Pokemons talks, uh, and I was right at the moment when you started, when we started playing with the same backing band, but with a different name. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. Uh, it's... It was kind of cool because like it cut down on the like load in and load out times. <laughs> uh, and it was also cool because like they did songs and the same people in a completely different way. Um, that's a credit to them. They're, they're fucking amazing musicians. So uh, no, it was super cool. It was some of my favorite times, man. And watching you guys play and uh, playing with those same musicians just in a different way is totally cool. I was telling uh, everybody that uh, This Is Home has been my very first EP. I never got the chance to actually work on, on a record with another artist. So uh, I was telling it's, it was my Joy Cape and Tony Sly uh, version of, of, of moment of my career. How was it for you to... I, I guess that we kind of influenced each other on, on every song. For sure, and that's that was a first for me too. Um, and yeah, I, I think we kind of bled into each other a little bit there, man. Like, uh, and even to honestly, man, to this day, I, I kind of write things with that little bit of uh, a punk slant to it, a little bit of the Irish in it, man. Like, uh, I think it changed in a good way. I think that's part of evolution, you know, as an artist is working. Yeah, yeah, man, uh, is working with other folks and then finding. Um, finding common ground and then yeah just your 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 influences you can't help it it just you just affect each other i think that's just what ended up happening and uh if we were i think that it could have went bad if we were like reluctant if we had if we were two guys are like no i'm going to do things this way it would have been a completely different process but i think the way that me and you work together and the appreciation that we already had i think that played a big part into it too Yes, that was a uh, I, I, that was one of the best moments of my life because we 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 really had a lot of fun. Uh, we 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 had a great time in the studio. Gianluca has been great. That was our very first record as Attitude Studio. So I, I I'm proud that this is actually the very first version of the record, the first copy that I that I hold it in my hand, and and it's and it's always there. It's always outside the studio so everybody can see it, that that was our very first masterpiece birthplace, man. the birthplace of the attitude that's great that's cool okay now that you're back in the states because of, of, of several reasons uh what it's like the 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 the, the music comeback uh, in the short moment uh, when there was no covid because because you've because you flew back from Italy uh, at the beginning of February, right? Yeah, yeah, it was fucking suck, man. Uh, the uh, like one month I was here, one month, <laughs> and, and shit went to hell, man. Um, honestly, the the plan was to finish the album that I had started the summer before with my buddy Patrick up in Dayton. And then once that was finished, I had some plans to come back and, and do some touring behind that there in Europe, playing some more shows with you guys and uh, playing some shows with Tim in Germany. That was being worked out uh, actually with Nick Chester as well. So uh, we were trying to work that out to open for him. Uh, not as, as we know. And I'm, again, I'm not, I, no pity party for me. I know everybody was in the same boat. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that's that's really one month, and then the, the kick in the nuts. So, uh, so yeah, we're 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 trying to get things restarted now, 
but now that everybody's at a different pace, like U.S., man, like we just, everybody's scrambling for, for booking now in the U.S., uh, with, but Europe, I mean, that's a different animal. So we'll see. Exactly. In your opinion, how much different was uh, uh, and how much helpful was for you to uh, perform in Europe uh, and then getting back in the U.S. Uh, uh, to actually bring some of that experience with you, not only considering the music, but also maybe uh, DIY managing yourself uh, uh, from the experience you had over here? Well, definitely, I think having the experience of being a career musician in general, not just in Europe, but just knowing, knowing what I'm doing, uh, and that, that really happened in Europe, was, was gaining that experience of being a career musician. I think that helped me uh, to navigate how to, how to get started over here and to know what I'm doing. As far as like the cachet, I guess you could say, of being a guy who played in, in Europe and toured, uh, that doesn't hurt, but I'm not an asshole and talk about it all the time either. So, uh, and now, I, I, you know, I think, think now that things have started up, I think we'll see a little bit more of that come into play a little bit. You know, the fact that, you know, uh, we're, we're starting back up. Uh, and so maybe we'll have an opportunity to kind of use that to our advantage again we'll see okay so the situation for uh for for you as as a songwriter will develop in a, in a brand new record uh can we say something about what you text me a few months ago about another project that it's maybe a little bit more a bit a little bit wider that than just just a, just the record Okay, let me check. Ninja Jam, yeah. man. Yeah. Okay, so you have it. So it, it's out there. We can spoil it. Well, you. this is it. This is breaking news. So, yeah, you can. we can do it here. It's cool. Wow. Okay, so uh, you, you uh, during the pandemic, one of your idea, uh, one, of, one of the thoughts you had was uh, to come up with, the, with a record company, with a label. So right. um, how did you decide to start this project and uh, uh, who's helping you right now with this Ninja record? Well, uh, so it's Ninja Jam Records. And uh, uh, so honestly, it, the, in typical Nick fashion, it started with a very modest idea. It started with like, uh, I, need a, I need to... I mean, 2020 was nothing but like losses. So uh, just from us being smart from a business perspective, it's cool to, you, you need to, I needed to have an incorporation so that I can claim losses. And so it started from there. And then I'm like, if, if I'm going to put my eggs in one basket in music, it better be my fucking basket that I'm putting my eggs in and not Sony's or Universal's or Columbia's. Fuck that shit. Uh, so... I mean, why give my shit away? So uh, that started with that. And then um, another thought happened. And it's like, I can, I can do my different projects personally and I can put my, my stuff on this. But like, I know so many fucking talented people that deserve to be heard. And I have a unique position of, you know, having those relationships overseas and in the U.S. So... Why not put those to use? So uh, that's that's kind of how that's evolved. So I'm taking baby steps in the beginning, and it's going to be my project. But the idea is to to get more folks involved and uh, do stuff that I'm passionate about, and whether that's mine or somebody else's stuff. So that's that's kind of where we're headed. Yeah, that that's that's a very good idea. That's a very good idea. That's a very good project. So uh, what 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 it's been like here in Europe, like meeting people and stuff. You wanna, you wanna, you wanna. The purpose is to bring this back to to the U.S. with 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 Ninja Jam Records, and uh, and the idea of probably touring the states. Correct. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, 
the thing is, is like I can't think small. I need somebody like Andrea Rock or somebody to just <laughs> tell me, calm down. <laughs> so, no, no, no! You better, you better go for it. You better go for it. This is this is a moment in time when you have like Neil Young, Paul Simon, Bob Dylan selling the rights of their songs to to major labels. Now we gotta go the opposite way. Exactly. Yeah. No. And the fact that like all the major sh major labels are the biggest shareholders of Spotify, like we. Fuck that shit like we need to, we need us independent labels uh independent studios like yourself attitude real love up in dayton i mean there's 98 of it is independent we just got to realize that and what people don't realize is 80 of people who sign with a major label are dropped by the second album and so it's just corporate bullshit so why not why not focus on you know uh on projects that you're passionate about, why not focus on making careers for folks that should have them, you know? Whether, again, whether that's me or, or somebody else, so. But <laughs> then, like US or Europe, honestly. And again, that's why I say somebody needs to kind of calm Nick down and, and slow him down a little bit, but uh, no, that's <laughs> the idea, that's the big picture. That that that's a very good idea. Getting back on, on, on the new record, uh, What's what's the situation like? Uh, how many songs can we expect on, on, on the record? How many songs are you working on right now? Uh, brand new material, covers. Can you spoil me something? Okay, uh, so I got two. I got two uh, albums happening simultaneously. They're both near the finish line. One is in the final mixing. Uh, and that project is... Uh, It's called Backup State. So basically, I, during COVID, I was looking for something fun to do. Uh, and so it's basically s seven songs total. Five of them are upstate songs that are redone. And then two of them are brand new songs. So uh, me and my buddy Rich Reuter uh, have been working on that. Uh, I'm excited about it. It's just literally, it was fun taking songs that I've been playing for hell a decade and a half now and uh doing them in a different way that was that was fun and then adding some songs that i thought deserved to be with those other songs if that makes sense uh, okay so this is record number one and, and i got a little bit I, i understood a little bit of that uh because uh, lorena came down here to do to do some parts to a song that i used to sing this so This is cool because like part of it was uh, part of it was recorded in Dayton. Part of it was recorded in Attitude. Like this is this is cool. I, I, I like that. That wasn't on purpose, but I like how it turned out. Uh, but yeah, you've heard a little bit of it. Uh, so Sinner, I can say that because, you know, obviously that's one of the songs that would be on there. Uh, but yeah, I love how she completely changed the complexion of that song. Fucking Lorena. She's the best, man. Uh, The other, the other project is uh, Shady Pines Volume 2. And uh, we're nearing the finish line with that. We just need some background vocals, uh, mix and master. So uh, that one was going to be on the shelf until we can properly like tour behind it. But the timeline moved up here in the U.S. So, uh, man, I'm thinking maybe a fall release for that one. Yes, maybe, maybe it's better to have a... a, a... Um, like two different releases, like one for for the U.S. market that it's evolving in a in a faster way now, and maybe the right. second one uh, in in Europe uh, when we're gonna be able to to hit the stages once again. What about the your your bandmates over there? Uh, who's collaborating with you? So uh, a lot of the same old strangers. Uh, it's a lot of the same folks. Uh, so Patrick. Uh, he, he's done a lot of work on there. Uh, Rich Ruder, a fantastic multi-instrumentalist, uh, brand new producer. So uh, we've been working together on Backup State, and uh, he's been phenomenal. Um, Amber Hargate, Chris Blank on backup vocals, Eric Reif on percussion. Uh, yeah, some of the same, old, same, same dudes I've been working with, but uh, 
as far as live stuff goes, we haven't really, we haven't got together yet. So we'll see in, in typical fashion who's available. So uh, the cool thing is, is like, I'm not, I'm not, it's, it's easy to find really talented people around here. So uh, I think, I think once we get that up and rolling, it's just going to be who's available. And then once a stranger, yeah, always a stranger. Exactly, man. The same old stream. That's, there's a reason for the name. Okay, talking about the influences, I remember that uh, when we first started playing together, you were uh, playing also some, some cover songs during your pretty long live set, because when you were all by yourself, you were playing for like hours. I remember that. And, uh, and, and you had covers from like, Tom Petty to the Pixies and stuff like that. Uh, lately, in the last maybe um, one year and a half, uh, uh, who pick up your intention talking about songwriting? Uh, actually, I've, I've been revisiting some stuff um, that really I didn't, it, I, I liked, but in a way, well, actually, I'll tell you what thing I've been doing is uh going to back to some of these bands like my morning jacket co uh guys that I, I loved you know 10 years ago but i never really dug into the songwriting and the musicianship of it i guess you could say but one thing i've been doing is actually going back and looking at their european club shows before they got into arena like that and just uh watching those shows and then Watching the European crowd, because I've seen this, watching the European crowd, like, who the fuck is this guy? Are these? And then absolutely fucking blowing them away. And then the crowd changes just like that. And so uh, I've been really digging on stuff like that lately and you know, watching stage shows. And as far as songwriting goes, I would say um, Wilco, Jeff Tweedy. Uh, one of my musical heroes. I've been really digging into him and kind of studying his song. Actually, he just come out with a book about writing. He, he, he talks about it so well. Uh, Jim James and My Morning Jacket uh, kind of revisited them. Pete Yorn, a, a singer-songwriter around here. So uh, kind of that's kind of the, the visiting some old old favorites that I really uh, dive into until, until recently. That's great. Uh, maybe uh, during the during the lockdown, uh, you had some extra time not only for uh, like uh, rehearsing or writing new songs, but maybe to get inputs from everywhere. Like maybe uh, I I don't know Netflix books uh, or something like that. That's something that I personally tried to do to uh, to avoid the that that bad attitude situation, like that that mental uh, breakdown. Uh, Uh, connected to the COVID thing. So uh, was it helpful for you to actually uh, maybe read some books also uh, or uh, watching movies? Because you said, I, I, I went back to the back catalog of my heroes, but maybe uh, you also moved to different direction, maybe books or movies or, or something like that. Well, um, that last part again. I was just telling uh, maybe some some books or some movies uh, uh, now that you had more time to spend at home uh, uh, influence you some way. Maybe you rediscover a soundtrack because that's what happened to me. Right. Uh, books, I've been really going back to the Beat Generation, guys. Me and you have talked about this before uh, with Jack Kerouac, Allen Ginsberg, William Burroughs. Uh, the guys from the Beat Generation, uh, going back, and honestly, the way that they write is kind of the way that I think. Uh, it's kind of a stream of consciousness thing, and every time I read their stuff, my, my thoughts and the way that I write becomes a lot more clear, and it becomes easier to write. Not that they, quote-unquote, influence me, but it becomes a lot easier To, to collect my thoughts and organize my thoughts in a way that makes more sense. So it's easier to write after I read them. Uh, I've been revisiting that. Uh, a lot of, like like I said, songwriting books from Jeff Tweedy, things like that. Uh, Dune. I started Dune, the book. That was cool. Uh, 
So, uh, yeah, as far as that goes, Netflix, uh, HBO Max, a lot of documentaries, a lot of documentaries. And like, like you were saying, to fall into that COVID trap, I think we all did to a degree. I think like there were ebbs and flows. And um, no matter, even when I was productive, uh, you still feel like you're not, I think we feel like this as musicians, we weren't doing enough. I'm like, I didn't feel I was doing enough. I was, but I wasn't. Doing so, uh, but yeah, it, it's, it's easy to get sucked into the Netflix hole and stuff like that. But yeah, kind of use it to our advantage but too. So after your, uh, your your experience in 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 Europe and in Italy, uh, how much the environment of the U.S. back again uh, helped you as a as a as a as a musician to get maybe different kind of inspiration? Like uh, now you walk outside, it's no more Porta Romana, it's no more Pogmaons, uh, it's no more. I'm going to Linate to take. Uh, 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 a, a fly to UK now it's completely different. So, uh, what it's like uh, when you transform that environment in, in, in your songwriting? Yeah, did you rediscover so, your yeah. country? Yeah, not only that, my city. Uh, so there's a lot of Cincy Love on Shady Pines, too. There's a lot of call outs, and uh, I mean, this is a Honestly, it's a beautiful city. I love Cincy. I mean, I missed it out of Milan, and that will always be home. But, you know, th there is a different vibe in Cincy. It's a, and I can't wait for you guys to come see me so I can kind of show you around and tell you what I'm, you can experience it for yourself. But, yeah, and not only just the, the city itself, but, like, uh, being around certain uh, other musicians and, and get, the folks around here are, they're talented. I mean, you guys are clearly fucking talented uh, that, that I worked with over in Europe, but these guys and are also in a different way. So that kind of rubs off on you as well. So, um, yeah, but as far as what you're saying, the city, yeah. I mean, especially with writing, there's a lot of Cincy love on uh, Shady Pines. It does shape it, man. It does. I mean, like in Italy, like yeah. in Milan, like you're walking down fucking Porto Romana, that beautiful fucking door, man, like, you feel all sentimental, and you feel like, man, like, uh, you know what I mean? And then, like, you walk in here, and you see, like, you know, street art and stuff like that, it's different, it's just, I don't know, I don't, it's a different vibe. Yes, uh, you also had the chance to leave another important moment in the history of your country, from from Trump to Biden, that was a was a was a pretty heavy stuff, uh, like a, like a pretty shocking uh, moment for for you. Uh, what's the feeling uh, also about the all the social issues that we've seen from 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 the other side of the ocean? Uh, so it's been a, it's been a pretty intense moment for 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 human rights in general in the US and for politics. Uh, you've always been connected to that kind of situation also here uh, with Amnesty International. So how did you leave those 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 critical moments? Right. So I think I'm so I'm I'm, I'm, I'm in a bar, <laughs> so I got to be careful. Uh, okay. Okay. So, okay. Okay. It's contentious. And the thing about living in Milan is that we were, I was, isol I was isolated a lot from, I was insulated, I should say, from a lot of that. You know, it wasn't as in your face, not the news, but you didn't really live with it. Uh, super, man, it's so contentious. Uh, tempers are high. I think they're calming now. But, I mean, with the pandemic and election year, uh, with the Black Lives Matter situation, um, it's, it's, it's a lot. There's a lot of stuff going on. And, and some of it's good. Some of it's necessary. Uh, but it's super, just super contentious. That, that would be the overall theme. It's, it's, it's calming, though. It's calming now, I, I think. But, you know, now we have the situation back now that things are opening up with mass shootings so um, 
you know, it's it's one situation to the next. It seems like here in the U.S. So um, I don't know. It's it's challenging. I'll put it that way. It's challenging. If there's one thing that I could like eliminate, it would be all of that <laughs> uh, about you know being in the U.S. Talking about something that it's that it's less complicated. Now it's almost baseball time, right? Today is the opening day, right? Yesterday, yesterday. In oh Cincinnati. yeah. So for our listeners that uh, don't understand, so Cincinnati was the very first national baseball team, and that's in 1869. Um, and so opening day in Cincinnati is fucking Christmas. It's Christmas, and the fact that here people are allowed back stadium. There's a little area around the stadium where people gather and like party and stuff. Um, it was kind of stupid that, that so many people gathered. I'll put it that way. But uh, man, people were going nuts. I mean, everybody's like, "Hey, it's spring! Like, let's let's go out. It's baseball time, man! It's 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 beautiful. It's beautiful." And this is the part of the since you know this is the first time I've had to really experience the real Cincinnati. Like, this is it, man! Like being living down here. I mean. Uh, living downtown so it's it's been cool it's, it's been a really cool experience we lost damn it but it was it was cool to see like a little bit of normalcy back and my fucking reds are back and people are in great american ballpark so it's been cool so we're gonna have a little bit of that cincy experience uh, in uh, in shady pines volume two we're gonna expect uh another record that is gonna bring us back to upstate, uh, uh, I definitely can't wait to hear all this stuff. Uh, and, uh, buddy, I can't wait to, to cross the ocean and come to hug you. Oh, buddy, same, same. Well, if it's in Milan or Cincinnati, I fucking can't wait for you to come to Cincinnati. I have everything planned. We're going to have the best fucking time. We're going to drink so many beers. <laughs> yeah, so many beers. Uh, uh, but, yeah, we're going to have great big hugs, dude. I can't wait. I can't wait to now. I have to say hi, but I will. I will show the video for Cruel Design. Uh, do, do you do you have particularly uh, I don't know memories about about that that video shooting in Liguria? One more time. I'm so sorry. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna broadcast the video for Cruel Design. Do you have any particular memory about that that video shooting? I remember we got drunk super early. <laughs> it was like eight o'clock in the morning. We we're drinking and having Jameson shots and shit. Uh, it was a fun, fun time. And then we got everybody with beer pong and like it was a it was a party. We walked like it felt because we had the windows closed. It felt like it was like midnight. We walk out and it's still fucking daylight. <laughs> and so <laughs> most of us were hammered. Uh, it, was, no, it was great, man. I had a great time. It was fun. It was good working with everybody. So, yeah, dug it. Okay, buddy. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for uh, your music. Thank you so much for your friendship through these years. I miss you and I can't wait to, to have you back here or crossing the ocean to come to hug you. Oh, back at you, homie. Back at you. Miss the shit out of you. Love you. Say hi to Megan, to everybody in Cincy, and let's go Reds. Will do. Yeah, fucking hey, there we go, man. Cheers. <laughs> Goodbye, buddy. Cheers. Grazie. Ciao. Nicholas Johnson, allora noi ci salutiamo per la diretta di stasera con il video proprio di Cruel Design, il secondo singolo estratto da quello che è stato il nostro EP, ovvero uh, This Is Home, potete ritrovarlo ancora in giro, ovviamente lo potete streamare nei digital stores e ovunque voi possiate trovarlo. Speriamo realmente che ci sia la possibilità di rivederci presto con, eh, con Nick. Di là le cose sembra che vadano molto meglio. Non so quanto avete capito, ma Nick ha anche ricevuto il vaccino ieri, quindi insomma eh, abbiamo la stessa età, quindi 
eh, se la stanno cavando un filino meglio rispetto a noi, stanno riaprendo un po' di locali, poi ovviamente questa live viene ricaricata su YouTube, se vi siete persi qualcosa c'è la possibilità di inserire i sottotitoli. Io vi auguro una splendida serata e vi ricordo che domani pausa, domani sabato di pausa, non ci sarà quindi il classico appuntamento con Roxville perché... Eh, abbiamo sfruttato l'intervista di stasera, la chiacchierata con il mio amico di rock and roll, Nicholas Johnson, per eh, parlare di musica. Ovviamente, però, ci sarà il nostro appuntamento domenica per eh, quanto concerne il mondo di NBA Live. Eh, saluto ovviamente tutti voi che siete stati con me e vi eh, do appuntamento appunto a domenica sera doppia live NBA perché ci sono due partite gigantesche praticamente in contemporanea salteremo da un campo all'altro intanto questa è Cruel Design Nicholas Johnson ci sentiamo prestissimo qui live su Twitch Between the start and the end Fleeting lights Like a flash of light All the breezes blow their middle wind